Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Uh, my name is Jamie and today we're going to take a look at using the updated fire simulator, the smoke and fire simulator in Blender 2.65. Um, I did do a tutorial on the older version of it but there has been quite a bit of changes. Um, it's still a fairly similar process but it's less fudging it and more actually being able to control the fire. Um, which is quite good. So, uh, to start off with, um, you might be aware there is, under the object menu, there's a quick effect for quick smoke, just here. Um, you can use that to set up yourself a quick simulation and then you can play with the settings and stuff. Uh, but I like to do things from scratch because it helps to know uh, exactly what's going on and exactly why things do things. So we'll go through from start to finish. Um, as before, we need a domain object, which a cube is fine for. Um, I'll just move that up to there. Um, and I haven't turned on my screencast key, so I'll start doing that. So you can snap that up uh, using control and just uh, moving it up. Um, and then I'll scale it up and make sure you hit period to scale around the cursor. Um, and I'll probably have it about that big. And then we're going to just set a plane on fire. So we'll add in a plane. Um, and then we can go straight out to creating the effect. So we'll go to the physics panel, smoke, and then domain for the cube, and smoke and flow for the plane. Because uh, that's where the smoke and fire is going to come from. Um, at the moment it's just smoke, but we want it to be fire. Um, the fire setting is going to generate some smoke as well um, so if you want some fire and smoke just go for fire uh, fire and smoke setting is probably good for explosions where there's a lot of smoke and a lot of fire uh, whereas fire is just fine for a normal fire where there's some smoke coming off the top of it um, we can hit our A and see not much is going on because we need to move the domain down a bit so the whole simulation can take place. So yeah, now you can see the whole plane's catching fire and there's some smoke rising up off it. Um, it's very uniform. Um, and if you try to render, you're going to get a picture of a cube, which is not what we're looking at in the viewport. So to fix that we need to set the correct texture, which is very similar to uh, the way it always has been. So we go into the material panel and we'll go to volume type texture, set the density down to zero. So it's going to be controlled by the uh, input from the voxel data. And then the main object is a cube. Um, the first one we'll do is the smoke. So we'll label that smoke. Um, doo -doo -doo, we want it to be these two settings here. Um, and we can set the density of the smoke to be 1.5. So it's just a bit thicker and um, you can see a bit more of what's going on. And then we'll go create another one. And this is our fire texture. So. Uh, same setting as before, the voxel data and the domain object is still the cube, but this time the source is going to be flame. Um, and we want these three boxes checked, so we've got the density, the emission, and the emission color. And we also want there to be color to the fire, because at the moment it's just going to be purple, which is one of the default colors that's in the texture. So we'll create a color ramp. Uh, we're adding two more lines and so we'll select the end one um, we'll make it a light blue even though the alpha is going to be zero it'll just um, help with the color the second one we want to be at about 0.6 um, and this is going to be a sort of a yellow creamy color so we're looking at about that uh, reduce the green a little bit, so it's a bit oranger. Um, that's pretty good. Um, and we want the alpha to be 0.8, I think. 
so it's almost transparent at the top um, where it's most yellow and then this is going to be where it's most red in the texture uh, which might sound a bit funny with the colour that I'm about to make um, we want no blue and we want a little bit of green um, point zero three. So I think the value that I was going for, and then about there. So we've got this reddish brownish color, um, and I'll make the alpha one. And this is black with an alpha of zero, which is fine. Um, the reason why we've gone for these colors is they're sort of the muted fire colors. Um, and we'll change them settings later so that it's really emissive um, and what will happen is everything will get really bright and once these colors brighten up it's sort of it's closer to the sort of fire that we're looking for um, so we'll do a test render now so that we can actually see you know we've got the fire it's fairly dull at the moment it's not very bright uh, we can fix that in a second but the biggest issue for me right now is it's very grainy um, and that's something that might come up, and it's it's an odd setting to fix um, if you haven't done this sort of thing before. It's under step size in the uh, material panel under integration. I'm going to go for 0 0.05 for now, um, so that should smooth most things out. Yeah, so it's quite smooth now. Um, it looks like there's a bit of a flame or something going on top of there. Um, to make it brighter, we will change the emission to 5 here, so that's made it a bit brighter, and then in the texture we'll change this, this is the density scale, um, we'll set that to 5 as well, and that will make things nice and bright in here, and um, we can turn you over those settings up if you want you to, to make sort of brighter looking flames but that's fine for now um, and we'll sort of start to play around with the actual settings of the fire now so we'll increase the resolution to about 60 here um, very important is smoke adaptive domain turn that on um, and that makes everything a lot easier on your computer um, it only is going to um, simulate within sort of where it needs to simulate um, as you see because there's only fire and smoke down here now it's this box here is showing you that's the adaptive domain so it's only simulating what's within that box rather than what's in this giant box um, which is a lot faster for your computer especially as it starts going so you can get to some sort of uh, flame nice and quickly so we've got that um, so we've turned the divisions up and you see it's gone a bit grainy again so we'll have to reduce the step size a bit. Um, we'll turn up the vorticity a little bit to 3. Um, and we'll turn on the smoke high resolution as well. Um, I'll leave it on wavelet for now because it's a lot faster. Um, but FFT, the other option, is a lot nicer I suppose. But it, it's very slow to generate the uh, flame effect with it. So I'll just let this generate for a few more seconds and then uh, we'll make the flames look really good. So at this point the flames sort of look in like there's something going on um, but it's just currently it's just this plane that's all on fire. Um, and if you've ever seen some real fire, you'll see that it tends to flicker and it licks up and down. And if it's on a log, it's not always going to be burning the entire log at once. There might be part of the log that's burning. And we can control all that with a texture. Um, so we'll select the plane. And we'll turn the flame... What is it? The flame rate. We'll turn that up to 2, I think. Yeah, and that creates a much taller flame. Um, it's a bit more... I don't know, it just makes it a bit better. 
Um, that's a very, actually a very good setting. A lot of people miss that. Um, and they've just got these weird little flames going on. Um, it's difficult to do anything whilst it's simulating. But we've got a much taller flame now. Um, a bit more roaring. Um, so it's looking quite good. Um, and then we will go to Smoke Flow Advanced. Um, and we're going to use these settings to use the texture to uh, affect where the flame is on the plane. So we'll have to create one. Um, in the uh, We'll create a material for... Actually, no, we won't. We'll just create a texture. Clouds is fine. Um, and we'll turn that up a bit so it's big. We'll go Veroni F1. And just squeeze these together a bit so there's a bit more definition between what's going on. Um, yeah, that's probably about good there. So then we go back to the physics tab and we can select that texture there. Um, and that will be, if we hit Alt A, you'll see that this just told the flame to generate here. Um, so I think where it's white there will be flames and where it's black there won't be flames or it might be vice versa. Um, but either way, it's telling that there's only going to be flame there. Which, you know, is useful control um, if you want specific things to be just on fire. Um, but the way we can get some good looking flames is to animate the offset. So we'll insert a keyframe here. And I'll insert a keyframe here for the value of say 2. And then that, that will basically slide the texture around. Um, you can see it sort of started off down there and it's sort of spreading around and so yeah you can use um, you can probably should be able to use an animated texture um, I haven't tried that before but I don't see why not um, yeah you see you could sort of control where the fire is going to be and um, stuff like that I think that's probably the majority of getting a good looking flame uh, going so we will Pause that simulation. And as you can see, even in the viewport, it's looking a lot more like a fire. Um, always make sure you've got a lamp, uh, otherwise you're not going to see any of the smoke or anything. And we'll also turn the background to black, just for the sake of uh, rendering. So I'll just set up the camera to be probably about like that. Yeah, so there's a bit of the smoke and a bit of the fire going on. So that's, yeah, that's what it's looking like at the moment. Um, quite good. There's flames building up. Um, we can probably orbit the camera around a bit. Move it around here. get a slightly better view of so there's flames roaring up from there um, again it's a bit grainy so I'll just set that step size to I'm going to set it at 0 0.005 and that will really that should fix most problems there um, I think the minimum you can go down to is 0 0.001 on that so that's sort of your highest quality render but it's it takes a lot longer to render as you can see here but it looks smoother and nicer um, and this looks really good when it's animated which you will need to bake the simulation for if you're going to do that um, which I'll show you how to do so yeah that's the flame as it's looking at the moment so to bake the simulation um, go to the physics tab make sure you've saved your file which I'll do um, and then smoke cache and you can set the start and end you can set a name which is a smart thing to do 
might call this fire tutorial. Um, and then I think going external is probably usually a good idea, but for now I won't. Um, and you can just hit bake, and you can see that number there. That's a percentage. Um, so once it reaches a hundred, it'll be done. Um, and I think that's most, pretty much everything as far as fire simulation goes these days. Um, I'll just cancel out of that with escape. And you can see there's a dark line along here where it's got uh, where it's baked some of the simulation, so I can just scroll along and see how the fire sort of looks um, animated, which is quite good. Um, and then when it, of course when it comes to rendering, make sure you set yourself to be uh, an AVI. I'll probably just go for Xvid um, just because it's good good quality. Set yourself an output. Um, I'd probably render at 720p and then hit animation and it will render through a bunch of frames. Start off quickly and then as the fire starts to generate there, um, yeah, it starts to appear. So that's quite cool. Um, let me know if you have any questions or comments about fire in Blender. Um, after you've baked, you can hit free bake, so you can bake again. Um, you can create new bakes here and name them. High divisions is very good for high quality, um, and churning up the di divisions here a couple of times is good for high quality, and also FFT um, if you want really good high quality flames. Um, of course, the higher quality flame that you do, it's going to take a lot longer to bake. Um, I think I've had to sit one down for a couple of hours and that wasn't even very uh, a very high bake and it was only on 250 frames so it can be quite time consuming as far as letting the computer do the calculations goes um, rendering the fire can take quite a while as well especially as you reduce that step size um, but it's worth it because you get a really nice looking flame um, I think that's just about everything. I think I've got a uh, render that I've already done, so I'll just dig that up. Okay, I've got it now. Um, so we've got this fire here, and this is a just a test render that I did a couple of days ago with very similar settings to what we used here. As you can see, it looks pretty awesome. Um, I think that was with a resolution of about 80 in the domain um, so you can get some pretty good effects and I'd probably say that's probably too much smoke for this simulation um, so I would reduce that amount and where are we um, in the smoke flames you can reduce the amount of smoke here um, so I'd probably reduce that probably down to about 0.2 from that video. Yeah, I would reduce that by quite a lot, um, just so there's a little bit of smoke coming off the top of the flames. Um, so hopefully you've learned a bit about, you know, getting some cool looking flames going on. Um, and please subscribe to my channel. I know it's been a little while since I've done a video. I've had a lot going on, so um, hopefully I'm sort of back got some plans for some more videos um, I've got a Facebook page and stuff and Twitter so go follow and like me there um, I'll post updates as to what's going on um, and I've got a few plans for some video series so I just wanted to get back into things um, and yeah so leave any comments or stuff like that if you like um, and I will see you next time